Once again, I've outdone myself, not only by the location here at this conference center in Anaheim, but with two favorable guests, incredible entrepreneurs. You may recognize them from other places, especially my friend here, Vanessa Hutchins. <laughs> Welcome to the playbook. Thank you. And then the handsome and articulate Oliver Trevina. I mean, I'll Welcome. take the handsome, but I've definitely not been called articulate before. Yeah, I was like, so that's a first. We'll see oh, how that goes. I love it. I, it's the accent that makes you so okay, intelligent and articulate. Let's carry on. Well, you know, you guys are friends. Yeah. yeah. And I have a rule about entrepreneurship and friendship. Uh, number one rule is don't go into business with your friend. I'm done. Rule number two, and I'm not going to ask which one. If you do go into business with your friend, make sure your friend has more money than you. Okay. <laughs> and then rule number three, if you don't listen to rule number one or two, go back to rule number one. <laughs> what inspired you two as friends to start this incredible company, Cali Water? I mean, to be honest, it, I think that was the thing. Nothing was forced, nothing was pushed. We didn't, we didn't think we want to do this. Like it, it happened, it was organic. And I think I truly believe in my experience in life that anything you force and push normally falls apart um, when it's when it's real and it happens and you're, and you're not pushing it that's when the magic is um, where the magic is so see I told you I wasn't articulate <laughs> I failed already 10 seconds in that's good um, but but that for us is what it was you know we've been friends for 15 years literally my, my lo the longest friend I've had in, in LA I mean I've had friends but you know friends come and go um, we've been through it all together um, we've been through thick and thin, um, and and so to to me, this is a walk in the park, you know. Yeah, literally. Did you have any intrepidation or any no. fear that it would ruin your friendship? No, zero. This is the first time it's been mentioned. So thank you. Lovely like... interview. We can wrap this up. <laughs> You're right on. We're all done. Yeah, uh, no, it's all. It's always just for me. Like I love working with the people that I love. You know, I'm very much a keep it in the fam type of gal. So. I was like the fact that we could do this together and see it lift off the ground and and like be creative and and get it into the hands of people that we love like that's what it's all about you know yeah. sharing things that you love with people you love I love that and, and we really believe in the product and that's the thing so it's yeah. like something we love bringing to our friends and bringing to our circle and you know once again without it being forced but so many of our friends are now part of the company too and yeah. it's you know whether it's investors or whether on the internal team or you know it's just it just happened that way and so. when it's right it does happen that way i don't yeah. know if either of you have read a book by michael a singer it's called surrender experiment i uh, know but i do love uh, a couple of michael's other books yeah i haven't read untethered that one, no. souls untethered another soul, one. i have the day yeah. you should read a, a you guys are a perfect example of surrender <laughs> yeah. experience ah. okay. uh, experiment because allowing things to happen but yet still putting forth the consistent persistent effort which it takes no matter how natural or simple things are, totally. you still have to put not only doing, saying, thinking, believing, but the feeling, yeah. the passion and the why behind Love it. Love that, I'm definitely gonna check that out. Yeah, the, the Untethered Souls, uh, they do a, a card box and you turn over a daily card every yeah. day. So I have those at home. You'll yeah. love it, you'll love that. Now, okay. I'm into counterintuitive things like surrendering uh, is counterintuitive to most entrepreneurs. They think they have to make it happen, force it to happen, muscle it to happen. But another counterintuitive thing is that you would actually have a water company based off of cactus water, yep. which seems to be like a scarce supply of water. <laughs> like from the <laughs> movies, I you know in your background, when I'm hearing cactus water, I'm thinking this could be delicious, but like how do you get enough cactus water to have a company with cactus well, water? So this will probably, well, maybe not shock you, but this was It'll shock the, me. the great thing. <laughs> cactus is, cacti is sustainable, right? So. It, we're, it's actually less risky than a coconut water. Coconut water, you've got to crack the coconut, you've got to drain the water, and then you throw the coconut out. So eventually, coconuts might not be around. Cacti, the prickly pear, naturally drains. So it's not, no, no cacti is harmed. Wow. So uh, the cacti naturally drains. It goes into, uh, you know, to our co-packer, and then we, we make, the, make the beverage. So the, the cacti itself is sustainable. And that's a big part of the company and the brand. And, and also, cac I, I think the cactus market even from what I hear and with conversations with retailers is growing across the board, you know, whether it's cactus based chips or cactus based tortilla wraps or whatever it is, I think we're going to see a massive surge in the next, you know, year or so. Um, That's phenomenal. I never even thought of that. And then I just this, made all that up. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> You're a great salesperson. <laughs> he didn't. Who came I didn't. up with the idea though? Where, where, because you guys both believe in 
you know, doing good to do well. Yeah. And this company represents that so, yeah, so totally. well, no pun yeah. intended. Yeah. I mean, but, I was actually on a road trip in New Mexico and I got a prickly pear margarita. Wait, and where I was in New Mexico, like, Santa Fe? I was all over. I was on a road trip. So okay, can I, was, I ask you a question outside? I'm good. I'm known for this, but I have to ask you. Okay. I, did a, I do a lot of keynote speaking. Uh -huh. and I'm not going to mention the university that I was doing the graduation speech for, but I swear there, there's aliens in New Mexico. There's like hybrid people that I felt very peculiar when I was in New Mexico. <laughs> I'm not going to say where in New Mexico. But you know how they talk about the... Yeah, hey, I don't yeah, think you yeah. need to say where. Well. I think everyone in New Mexico <laughs> doesn't like you at this point. Yeah. <laughs> no, they might. The, the aliens might. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, I digress. Um, but yeah, I tried this margarita, the prickly pear, and I was like, what is this magical thing that I have never heard of? Um, and then I started learning about all the health benefits that it has, and that's totally in alignment with like who I am, what I stand for. What and, are some of the health benefits? Um, there's so many. Well, I mean, there's five times the natural occurring electrolytes more so, than so coconut water. So it's super hydrating. There's a ton of antioxidants. So it's great for hair, skin, nails. It has antiviral properties. Now you're giving up all your beauty secrets to everybody. I know, literally. I know. It's already competitive <laughs> enough in the <laughs> entertainment space. Don't give everyone your secrets. Uh, yeah. Digestion, hydration, yeah. you know, Hi it's, uh, yeah, well. it's, it's, it's. Yeah. So what about the cost? Is it, you know, like some waters are like 2,000 feet under the sea <laughs> or coconut water. What did you say? What about the... The, the cost. The cost. You know, to, We're losing to, to money. It. No, um, <laughs> uh, it costs us $10 for every can and we sell it because we love people. Um, That's beautiful. No, it, the cost is, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a, you know, it's a fruit. But it's reasonable. It's, it's reasonable, yeah. I mean, uh, there's cacti farms. There's a, there's a lot of farms, you know, around the same as there is everything else. So it's, it's out there. And as I say, it's a growing market. So I'm sure as the market grows, costs will reduce as well. Um, but right now, obviously, you know, cost is attainable. We wouldn't be doing it if it wasn't. Um, yeah. And now business experience wise, I always say there's a million great ideas, but it doesn't mean they're a good business. <laughs> and it takes a certain type of person to take a great idea that other people haven't thought of and make it into a good business. What roles do each of you play in making this a good business? Because not only is it a great idea, number one, I've tasted the quality of the product, exceptional. You deliver it well. Thank you. And now if you deliver it well to the masses, that's when good ideas delivered well to the masses become great businesses. Yeah. Which roles do you guys play in the business end of it? I mean, I'll be honest, it's 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 and I really don't think people expect this, but everything from the from the beginning of this beverage to even now, like I mean Vanessa's an extremely busy human being and people would just assume, oh, I'm sure she's just here and there. Mm -hmm. It's everything. I like there is no there is nothing in that drink that wasn't approved or, I mean, to nothing at our booth today nothing, that she, wasn't approved. Literally, it's we're on an email packaging. with the people making our booth. And I think they were even shocked that Vanessa's on the thread and saying, hey, can we do this? And I screenshot this tile that I found this and this wood and this, like, she's extremely involved. And I think we collaborate well. And I also know, like, there's things I'm not good at. Like, for instance, I'm colorblind, so I'm not even getting involved. <laughs> I'm not getting involved in the- I'm definitely like the creative. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And like uh, with how things taste, very, we're both very involved yeah. in, obviously. Yeah. Um, but like packaging is something that like I'm very hands-on with and and just making sure the whole thing is cohesive. Yeah, and also cares because, the, the, you know, there's there's an element of even, I will take it and I'll be like, oh, this tastes great, Wait, we should do it. And she's like, no, it's still not right. And we yeah. have to wait another two weeks to <laughs> to speak to the formulation people and that. But that's a blessing because I don't know many people in any walks of life, let alone a partner like Vanessa, that is that, you know, I, I guess focused on every little touch, you know? I'm very detail oriented. <laughs> that's the best way of putting it. <laughs> that's great and it's important, but you both still, although you have a personality that's more like mine, very detail oriented, <laughs> you still as partners need to have open minds, open hearts and open hands. And I see that immediately when I met both of you, that there's an authentic relationship and love for what you do and love for each other. Yeah. yeah. But needless to say, I love my siblings, um, but at times I tend to have an ego-based consciousness because I care so much <laughs> that I have a need to be offended <laughs> or a need to be right. Are there any kind of ego consciousnesses or needs of of you at any time that you think you know we're, stands we're in that way? we we're chosen family we, yeah. we choose each other yeah. and like our relationship has survived the past 17 15, 15 years, years. 
because we do. And I feel like it's just so nice that we get to dream something up together and see it come into fruition. You know, like it's so rare yeah. that that actually happens. And which is just, why I'm asking all these questions. Yeah, I'm no. like, yeah. Holy shit. These guys are it's, for real. It's honestly like you said, it was the same thought I had. And I'd never looked at it this way until you you worded it that <laughs> way. But you know, family, you, you, and I love my family, Me but too. they're my family. So you have to deal with the ups and downs and the, this and that, baggage. and, and you, you, you don't have a choice. Friends can walk away. And for 15 years, you've seen me through my ups, my downs, some moments that I was probably a complete pain in the ass and a nightmare. <laughs> and she didn't have to stay, but she stayed. And that to me is a testament of everything. And I'm, I'm you know, there for her for life. And she knows that and, yeah. and it's vice versa. And I think that's the difference. I gave myself goosebumps. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> but it's, uh, it does, it makes me emotional because yeah. she's she's so of the earth and I'm grateful and it's it's a friendship that's become deeper than, you know, any other friendship. And I think that's the, it's a good way of putting it because family and you love your family, but you're like, oh, I'm stuck <laughs> and I have to answer the phone when they call back the next day because they're still my family, even if they did upset me. It's not that case with friendship. When you, when you find a real one and you're there for each other that way, you you know, you it's can't turn your anywhere. back. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it, I was blessed. Uh, my business partner is a Hall of Fame quarterback, a guy named Warren Moon, and he asked me why. What's a quarterback? Sorry, sports one market. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Probably like rugby. Go sports. Uh, <laughs> so, but Warren asked me, you know, because we were such good friends, he was someone that we represented at Lee Steinberg, the sports agency, and then he wanted to spin off a marketing company, and he asked me why. I wanted to be a business partner with him because he had asked me to be his business partner. And I said, humility. I said, I'm around the greatest celebrities, athletes, entertainers, billionaires, millionaires. And it's rare when you have that leverage in life, which there is a leverage in life that you get from the fame and fortune uh, in our society that you still can maintain humility, a real humility. And I feel that to be true, especially of you, Vanessa, you've been successful for so long, <laughs> but yet your relationship is authentic and, and humble. So humble, Oliver, yeah. And, and you are respectful of that real re Vanessa that probably most of us will never see. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh no, it's, uh, yeah, it's it's crazy. But you know, that's that's life. I mean, I'm I'm, I'm 40, I'm, I'm a bit older than old, Vanessa. You're old, man, 40. But, uh, <laughs> but I'm, I'm still learning every day, you know? I still, I still have to learn. I still have to keep myself in check every day. I'm still making mistakes. It's just part of life. But I think you surround yourself with the right people. And that is one of the most important lessons I've ever learned in my journey is the people around you, you know? And tactfully, the last two years have not been easy on supply chain, especially. Yeah. And this product has supply chain, uh, you know, issues and focus. How were you guys able to continue to grow and scale and brand so well over the most challenging time for you know, a beverage company with supply chain issues? I mean, I think for me, the thing that was like really special was we were given this chunk of time that we normally wouldn't yep. have. Without a doubt. Um, so we were able to really put our heads together and figure out a, a plan of attack for our company. And for me being the creative that I am, I was like, okay, this is how I want our campaigns to look. Yeah. This is the kind of images that I want us to be pushing out. Um, these are the company, the the grocery stores, the yeah, retailers yeah. we love and we want to be pushing things out to. So, I mean, it just gave us the time to really get focused and get on the same page and kind of figure out a game plan as to how we can push this out into the world. Yeah, and I, I think that's that, that's a good point because she is always here, there and everywhere in the best way. I mean, busy and I think it gave us a chance to like sit and really focus and get things right to then, you know, build that foundation to then move forward. Um, but in reference to your supply chain, I mean, everyone suffered, you know, we yeah. were, yeah. It, it pushed our launch out a few times, but I truly believe in timing. And it, eventually when we did launch, it was perfect timing, yeah. even the way we did our event and everything else, like it all worked itself out. But in the in the beginning, yeah, I mean, we had the, the co-packer pack we were working with originally, I think they shut down twice with COVID, you know, it's a, it's, it's a, it's an issue, you know, it's everyone struggled with it. But the blessing of that was for sure that we got to spend some real time together and kind of build this out properly and be on the same page um, and then move forward, which is a massively important. And now with the product itself, everyone has a favorite part of their baby. Totally. And I would say it's, I'm always fearful when you're in love with a product <laughs> uh, to be in business with my own product. I try to keep entrepreneurs as I coach them 
don't be in love with your product. Stay pragmatic. But I can tell you guys are in love with your product, which yeah, is wonderful. <laughs> Do you have differing opinions on what your favorite thing is about Cali water? I mean, I think we're both super passionate about health and wellness. Um, so I think, yeah. I've, right? Our yeah, favorite yeah, thing is yeah. like how, how good it, for you it actually yeah. is. Yeah. I am the worst person ever with drinking water. Um, I need hydration and now I have it with our company. And it's just so fun because literally every single person's hands that we put it into, they love it. So I think that's the exciting part is when we say everyone as well, it really is everyone. Like whether I've given it to my parents, which was a challenge because I wanted to send them like a four pack to England and it got sent back six times because of customs. <laughs> Cost me about a thousand bucks in the end for my parents to try Cali water. But eventually when they did, they love it and they're in their seventies. And then we've got kids that, you know, a, a, my godchildren are two years old to an 18 year old to everyone really drinks it and is like, oh wow, we love this. And I think that's the exciting part of why we want to build this so big is because there's no reason it can't be either, you know? Well, I'll tell you what's so rare, and as you look around this convention that we're at, is there's very few products that are so healthy for you, so sustainable. Yeah. Right? I'm like, even almonds. You know yeah. what water and almonds sucks up? <laughs> yeah. Like, literally. I mean, I'm surprised. They, they should be more than gasoline. Nobody knows how much that is right now. But what surprises me when I tried this is it could taste this good. I yeah. know. And be healthy I know. and so sustainable, which I just of learned that component yeah, yeah. of it yeah. right now. Um, do you know why or how it's so uh, tasty? Like, what do you guys <laughs> yeah, do? Yeah, because she's extremely picky and we have to do 65 <laughs> tastings to get it right. I can tell you, it probably would have been half that good if I had the thing. Right. I'd be like, we're good now. <laughs> we're good. Make the cans. Picky. I'm picky and I would have quit after 30. Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah, that's yeah, okay, good it's enough. good enough. Let's just it's get the drink out of there. sustainable. That's yeah. good enough. People yeah. drink it. And by the way, have you tasted some of the excuse my language, <laughs> stuff here. No, <laughs> no comment. Like they'll no, tell me how great it is for him. Like, you know what? It could literally give me a year off of my life or, you know, out a year. I'm not eating this every well, day. Well, I think that's this stuff I'll drink every day. Yeah, that's, and yeah. that's what we do yeah. do. Like, yeah. I literally wake up and first thing, go grab, because my favorite is the prickly pear. I call it my candy water. Grab that and down it first thing in the morning. And when I tell you, like, I've got cases delivered on for, like, the week and they're gone in two days. Oh, like, yeah. everyone is like obsessed with them. Candy grapes, right? Literally, before we were, yeah. like, wow, before we were shipping so around uh, like nationwide, I was visiting you in Florida. Yeah. And before I even left, she was like, hey, can you bring me some Cali water? <laughs> like, like, it's like, you, we genuinely both love it. And I think for me, you know, I, I love health and wellness and I was always that strange guy going in a grocery store, store and whatever it said was really healthy, I'd buy. And you do get used to just assuming that if it's good for you, it tastes bad. That's yeah. just the way just it's going to be. Here, you know, if it, if it <laughs> you just accept it and you kind of close your eyes, you grin your thing, you down it and you're like, it's fine, it's going to help me. And that's the exciting thing about this is like, it's good for you, but it tastes great. It doesn't need to taste bad. So, but I think tastes, it takes time. It tastes so good that you can use it as a mixer, which I definitely oh, yeah. do. Yes. <laughs> it, it is amazing. Uh, but I will tell you, this may be the most expensive. I've traveled around the world and done this podcast. I've done over a thousand of them. Uh -huh. This may be the most expensive because I think I'm gonna lose half of my endorsement deals with health food companies <laughs> and anybody in New Mexico that loves me. So yeah. I just, I, mean, I have to be truthful. This I love absolutely that. is the best water I've tasted. Thank you. Beyond and just so being, you know. Beyond it being healthy, and even sustainable. So yeah. I wanna congratulate you Thank both. you, brother. Thank you. Say? No, I was gonna say, and on that note, if you lose everything, if you go bang up, we're gonna send you six cans for free. Hey, <laughs> we got you back. You gotta, you gotta start following me, because I'm known for losing everything. I, I lost over $100 million and made it back. So there you nailed you my brand, see? You're just promoting you're fine, me. Bro. I, let's switch seats. Yeah, I told fine, you, bro. you're articulate and smart. All right, last question real quick. What's next? Oh. Oh, well, for Cali Water, we got a lot of Cali things water, coming yeah. on. We're we gonna... um, have a kid's pouch, which I am so excited about. Thank because God. growing up, like, I remember the Capri Suns and how much high Sugar. fructose corn syrup <laughs> is in it and artificial coloring. And I was like, this would be the perfect product for children in the prickly pear. Because like I said, I call it my candy water. Um, so we came up with a little pouch that like I was very involved with designing the packaging, put little mantras on the back for kids to say out loud and empower them. And um, yeah. we're really excited to launch that. Yeah, we have a couple new flavors coming as well. We're just finalizing, finalizing. 
putting the taste on those. Um, and then we'll be doing a couple more, I say product innovations. We won't mention too much, but we have we have some interesting stuff in the pipeline. Yeah. And then it's just about, you know, expanding. We're obviously available on Amazon nationwide, so people can do that, but we're, we're you know, fast growing in California. We'll be on the East Coast um, and just really expanding nationwide this year. And then hopefully- Global. See what, see what, oh yeah, see what Worldwide. else happens. Worldwide. Yeah. Worldwide. Global. <laughs> Worldwide. Cali Water. <laughs> well, not only am I in love with your product, Cali Water, but I'm in love with both of you. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Oliver. Thanks Thank for the you. time. Thank you. Thanks for the support.